This is a short instructional video illustrating how to format an APA style paper using Microsoft Word 2007 or 2010 for the Windows operating system. This video will illustrate style rules for the sixth edition of the APA publication manual. If you are not already familiar with Word 2010, notice that at the bottom right you can zoom in and out to control the size of your paper. Similar to Word 2007, there is a ribbon at the top of the screen. This ribbon organizes menu options categorically. There is also a File button in the top left corner of the ribbon where other menu options can be found. This button is similar to the Menu button found in the top left corner of the window in Word 2007. Most familiar menu options can be found in the Home, Insert, and Page Layout tabs. To begin formatting your template for APA style, click on the Page Layout tab and click on the bottom right icon in the Page Setup box. Make sure you are applying your options to the whole document. Click on the Margins tab and set all four margins to one inch. Then click on the Layout tab. Your header and footer should be one half inch from the top and bottom of the pages. An APA style requires the first page to have a different header than all subsequent pages. So to use this option, check the box that says Different First Page. If you'll be writing papers primarily in APA style, you could save time in the future by clicking Default rather than OK to make sure all blank templates automatically have different first page header and have properly sized margins. To make sure your ruler is showing, click on the View tab and check the box that says Ruler. Now you can notice that you can change where the text appears by moving the arrows at the top left or top right of the margins. To control your text settings with more precision, go to the Home tab in the ribbon, click on the icon in the bottom right of the paragraph box. Here you can set your spacing and indentation. APA requires all paragraphs to be flush left with first line indentation. The entire manuscript, not just the text, should be double spaced and make sure there is no additional space before or after the paragraph by setting both of these options to zero. Click on line and page breaks to remove the default option for widow orphan control which, when selected, would automatically move lines to the following page to prevent any isolated lines in a heading or paragraph. This is not required by APA style, and it often results in an unnecessary waste of space, so don't use Widow Orphan Control. Then click OK or choose Defaults to make sure all future documents maintain the same settings. Next, click on the icon in the font box. APA style requires you to use Times New Roman 12-point font throughout the entire manuscript, including the header. The only exception is within a figure, where a sans-serif font is preferred. Choose the correct font and size, then click OK or choose Default to make sure all future documents maintain the same settings. Notice that most of these settings can be controlled without accessing the full menu, using the shortcuts available in the font and paragraph boxes. Becoming familiar with these shortcuts will allow you to quickly center or flush left your text or your headings as needed, and to use bold, italics, and subscripts and superscripts as needed. To insert your header and page number, click on the Insert tab and select Page Number. Choose the first option, Plain Number 1 which will put the automatic page number at the top left of the page. Notice that a new tab appears in the ribbon at the top of the window to control these options. You can move between the body and the header by double-clicking outside of or inside the header. On the first page header, type the words running head and a colon to the left of the page number. Then use your tab key to move the page number to the flush right position. Make sure to position the right tab in the ruler so that it is at the right edge of the right margin. Choose keywords from your title as your abbreviated header, 
and make sure to type it in all capital letters. The running head is limited to a maximum of 50 characters. That includes letters, numbers, and spaces. Check to make sure the header and page number are in Times New Roman 12 point font. If you highlight it, an option box appears to the top right of whatever you highlight, and you can change your format rather quickly using these settings. When you are ready to begin typing in your main document, double click in the body of the text, click the icon to center the title. Click enter a couple of times, perhaps three, not too many times, just enough so that the title will be positioned in the upper half of the title page. And then begin typing your title. Capitalize the first word of the title and subtitle along with all major words. Major words are all nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs, along with any conjunctions and prepositions that are four or more letters. Below your title, type your name, and below that, your institution, such as your university. Press Enter again, and go to the Insert tab, and click on Page Break. Rather than typing Enter so many times, this method will ensure that the label on your next page will always appear in the correct position, even if you make changes to your paper. Center the word abstract at the top of the second page, and then press enter and insert another page break. The top line of the following page will always have the same centering or flush left format that the bottom of the previous page has, so that's why you want to make sure to press enter before inserting a page break. At the top of page 3, center your title. You can also copy this from the title page to make sure it has the exact same spelling and format. Do not use the word introduction as the label for your text. Click on the home key again to flush left your text, and you can set first line indentation by clicking in the paragraph box or by moving the arrow at the top of the ruler. Remember that the abstract is the only paragraph in your manuscript that is not indented. You can insert the page number and header on subsequent pages the same way you did the first time, or simply double click in the header position, copy the header and the page number, but not the words running ahead from the first page, and paste it into any subsequent page. The page numbering will be automatic but make sure that your text appears in Times New Roman 12-point font. All sections of the main text are continuous, so your next page break should be for the reference page. Make sure you remove any indentation before centering the word references at the top. Below that, all actual references must be formatted in hanging indentation. You can set these with the arrows, just as you did with first line indentation. Or, again, you can select the paragraph option and select hanging indentation. Consult the APA manual for formatting rules in the reference page. Type each author's last name, followed by a comma, and their first and middle initials separated by a space. Remember to always keep the same order of authorship that appears on the manuscript's cover page. This is followed by the year of publication, and then the article title. Only capitalize the first word of the title and the subtitle, along with any proper nouns. Then, the publication information, which is the italicized journal title, italicized volume number, and the page numbers. Note that between a range of numbers, APA requires the use of an N dash, not a regular hyphen. You can insert an end dash by going to the Insert tab, clicking on Symbol, and choosing More Symbols. 
choose the Special Characters tab at the top, select N- and click Insert. Before clicking Close, you can also click on Shortcut key to assign your own shortcut. The universal shortcut is to hold Control and type the minus sign on the number keypad, not the one above the P. If you're on a laptop, you probably don't have a number keypad, so you can change the shortcut here by holding Control and typing the regular minus sign above the P key. You can assign it or remove it as you please. A manual way to generate an end dash is to type the first page number, space, a regular hyphen, space, the last page number, and when you click period or space again, the hyphen will become an end dash. But if you do it this way, you must remember to erase the spaces afterwards. Further tutorials can be found on the Microsoft website and at Kennesaw State University's website. The computertrain.kennesaw.edu is available to faculty, staff, and students. Or you can simply Google your question using keywords. But the best way to become familiar with your program is to play with it. The more you point and click to test out every possibility, the more you will learn what is and what is not helpful. For other APA formatting inquiries, you can consult the APA-style PowerPoint on the Kennesaw State Psychology Lab webpage where this instructional video can be found, along with others, or simply consult the APA publication manual. Thanks for watching.